Welcome to part seven of this series of in-depth looks at the workspace in Shortcuts A Lot. This uh, video we're going to look at the virtual mat, that's this area here, the part of the screen that represents our actual cutting mats for when we're designing and creating projects to be cut on our electronic cutting machines. So basically the first thing is we need to make sure that it's set to the right size. Now as I've shown you before, over in the Documents tab in the Properties panel, you have got various selections that you can use to set this to be the size of the map that you're going to be using. There's various basic ones here, but also you can set a custom size if you need to. I'm just going to go back to the 12 by 12 as it's quite useful for the on-screen demonstrations. Now, Within this area, you've also got things called pages, and these are almost like having extra cutting mats. So, for example, on page one, we might cut the sentiments that are going on our project. On page two, we may cut the cards that are going to be there. And then if we create a third page, we can maybe cut the embellishments that we're going to have in a project. It's basically a way of containing all of the elements that you cut for a project, but that you may want to cut from different materials or colours within the one file so you don't have to keep reloading so you can copy things from page to page if you need to or even just work on one page at a time you can delete them if you need to for any reason by pressing the x in the top right of the little page tabs and if you double click on it you can also rename it so if i call this sentiments and if i call this one card and if I call this one embellishments, then you can see how that would work in a project scenario. So our card would be cut from this one, our sentiments from this one. So sentiments you might even cut from a lighter weight card stock than your card, and the embellishments you might want to cut from a specific color range. So that's one way of using pages. You can um, change the page order as well just by clicking, holding and dragging. So if that makes a difference, obviously you can do that. But we need to get some things onto our map now. So one of the easiest ways is to go into our library and choose from the basic shapes that are available. So if I click drag one of those over, we can see that that's there. Also double clicking the shape works to get a shape onto the design. Now, around each shape, there are various uh, handles. So I'll just quickly show you those and then I'll show you how to get some lettering onto the mat as well. If I zoom in first to the actual shape, you'll see those handles better. This one in the top left is your free move um, handle. So basically, if you click and move that around, it moves the shape in wh whatever direction you want it to. Uh, the next one is a vertical move, that's this one here, sorry, this one here, and this basically moves it just up and down. You've got the horizontal move, which is this one here, and that again just moves it left and right. You've got stretch for both uh, orientations, so stretching vertically we've got here, stretching horizontally we've got here. If I just move that back again. Uh, and we've got obviously a rotate option here as well. If I just click and drag, that will go around in all sorts of different increments of um, angle. But if I hold down the shift key, it will go in 15 degree increments. So I can get evenly spaced out shapes around a circle or a circular design. This uh, icon down here moves both, uh, stretches both horizontally and vertically. And if I hold down the shift key while doing it, it constrains the proportions whilst doing so as well. So it will automatically resize the height according to the width. So that's how we get on with um, the, the handles. I can access a shortcuts menu here by right clicking. And up here I will have things like transform, move. I can actually set specific absolute positions or relative positions. If I right click again and transform, I can scale this to be a specific size 
or a percentage. So if I need to increase something by 200%, I can type in that percentage. I can keep the aspect ratio locked or I can unlock it. I can apply this to all the pages or apply to shapes individually as well. So a great thing to have, nice and uh, time saving. Rotating, I can set at a specific angle or I can skew the shape as well. So that's stretching it diagonally as opposed to rotating it. Also on my shortcuts menu, I've got the arrange tools and this will only be relevant if I've got uh, two or more shapes on here. So I'll just pop another one in here and I'll give it its own color. Oops, not that one, this one. Let's give it a pinky color. There we go. So currently, because I've got obviously the um, workspace alpha set, I'll just increase that a little bit so it's a bit more opaque. So we can see that this pink shape is sitting on top of the white shape. If I go to arrange and send to back, that now goes behind the white shape. Very relevant if you're using one of those path tools that um, splits things by front minus back or back minus front, because that will punch things out in a specific way. So you see there, that would only work that way if I've got those that way around. Um, now then, more from the right, uh, more from the shortcuts menu here. Appearance, we can add a shadow layer just by going in here, and I can choose whether it's a rounded or straight edged, uh, rounded or straight cornered design. Change the size with the slider, or with the just type in a specific measurement. I can give it a color. I can increase the number of shadow layers. I can inset that shadow layer so it goes inside the shape instead of outside. I can make it blacked out. I can give it a print and cut outline. And I can actually give the layer size variance. So basically, it will go from thick first layer to thin last layer, which I think is just a genius thing to do. That's uh, shadows, shortcuts, appearance, lattice we can give this shape a lattice look. And I've got various options available to me here. Now angle I'm gonna to set to zero. Rotate I'm gonna leave it as it is. Inverse is basically punching holes into the shape. Width, gap, we'll leave these as they are. We'll preview that. So you can see it's now given it um, a lattice look. Now there's not many um, holes here because uh, it's quite a small shape. If I change that inverse, you can see how that's created almost like a lattice look in that design. And that can be applied to any shape. So if I do it on the other rectangle and reset that angle, preview it, you can see how that's now put that lattice within that rectangle. So it doesn't matter what shape you've got, you can create a lattice from it. From the shortcuts appearance menu as well, we can also create a rhinestone pattern based on specific parameters. So I can choose the round rhinestones at size three. Uh, oh, that'd be 1.4. Fill the shape with stones by preview. I then can see what that would look like and also see how many stones it's going to use. I can change the spacing between the stones again if I want, so it gets a more a tighter look. And on screen, obviously, it's showing me what those rhinestones would look like. When you cut it out with your machine, obviously, you would just get holes or whatever you need to do in that process. So I can click on any of these to select the designs, click preview to update it. If I choose one of these others, I can get a better idea of how that would look. And square ones, again, I get a preview. Okay, so carrying on with that shortcut menu, we've got path um, shortcuts here. And these are pretty much all the same functions we've got in the path menu here, just available to us uh, with the shortcut menu. So union would join two shapes together. 
intersection would basically uh, give us just the bit where the two shapes overlapped. That's this bit here. Exclude would basically give us a shape that now has that overlapping bit punched out. Front minus back will basically take the back and chop it out the front, and vice versa, the back minus front would do the other one. Uh, simplify the path should uh, give us a way of reducing the amount of nodes, but in the case of these simple shapes, sometimes it would increase them. So sometimes it's not worth doing, but if you've got lots and lots of nodes, you can change these parameters and hopefully reduce the number, which reduces the file size and also makes some designs compatible with some machines that only have a low number of acceptance. We can split the path. Oops, let's try it on a single shape. We can split the path sometimes. On this shape, it's not possible. Reverse it. We can change an object of path, close a path, convert node corner to corner, to a cusp, to smooth. These are all um, these node editing uh, features that we've got available to us. So I could right click path, convert node to corner. So that's now quite a sharp corner instead of a rounded corner. So lots of things available to us there. Cut, copy, paste, delete, we know those. Group, ungroup, we know those. Break apart, again, is only relevant if you've got a multi-part design. Hide, I can hide that particular thing. Now, Control-Z gives me an undo feature, so I can bring that back. Show all, lock, or unlock all. I've explained these in previous videos, so please do check those ones out. Now, over and above that, from the virtual mat, we don't have a huge amount more available to us because that's our workspace. But even those tools are pretty comprehensive in terms of a workspace for designing your cutting files. So I hope that's been of use to you and I'll join you next time in part eight, where we'll be looking at importing, tracing and exporting. For more hints, tips and tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on any of these social networking sites.